Hamas and Israel are nearing a tentative deal to release 50 hostages, women and children, in exchange for Palestinians currently held in Israeli jails as well. There would be a pause in fighting for a few days and more aid coming into Gaza. That's according to a Washington Post report that was first published yesterday and then a report by The New York Times from just a few minutes ago. Israel has released a video yesterday purporting to show evidence that Hamas has been, in fact, storing weapons and military gear in al-Shifa hospital. Let's take a look. What you will be able to see are is military equipment. There is a an AK-47. There are cartridges, am, ammo. Uh, there are uh, grenades in here. Of course, uniforms. And all of that. This was hidden very conveniently. And when our troops open this uh, closet here, which is in the main part of the clinic, this is what they found. These weapons have absolutely no business being inside a hospital. The only reason they're here is because Hamas put them here, because they use this place, like many other hospitals and ambulances and sensitive facilities inside the Gaza Strip, for their illicit military purposes. But uncaptured news journalist Dan Cohen chalks up the IDF's latest video as nothing more than failed propaganda, posting on X, quote, Israel said Hamas operates as a command center underneath al-Shifa hospital. Nearly a full day after invading it, Israeli propagandists show few, a few rifles and grenades that could easily have been planted in a blurred out laptop, another huge failure of uh, propaganda failure. Meanwhile, amid escalating calls for a ceasefire, a senior Israeli official seems to have contradicted Israel's stated objective of rescuing hostages. Axios reporter Barack Ravid took to X, where he posted this official quote. Said, he said that the purpose of the IDF operation at the Al-Shifa hospital wasn't to rescue hostages, but to locate and expose a Hamas tunnel hub that connects with the ho connects the hospital rather with other parts of the Gaza Strip. Israel justified their raid of Al-Shifa because of the stockpiles that were found. So this has been ongoing. The New York Times, which again has not exactly been let's say, overwhelmed with supportive coverage of the Palestinian view of things, it characterized uh, the al-Shifa raid so far as, as, as such. It said, the Israeli army has not presented much evidence that Hamas used al-Shifa hospital as a base. A military spokesman said the search would take time. It's been reported that they're now saying that the tunnels that they'd hoped to have found were all cemented up, that because um, Hamas knew they were coming, they were able to basically plug all the, the tunnel system that they averred that they would find and have now not find. They've been now searching for uh, over 24 hours, and it's becoming increasingly looking less and less like there is a command base, which, well, of course, was the justification. We know there were tunnels. There, there Israel some, there built some the tunnels, tunnels under, the, yeah. <laughs> under the facility when they were occupying it in the 1980s, um, and there was fairly overwhelming evidence that they were using this hospital as a base in 2014. I know that even Amnesty International concluded that they were doing yeah, that. That's true, although saw... I did do some follow-up reading on that point. Um, uh, Norm Finkelstein actually advised me to read a chapter of his book where he talks about Amnesty International's coverage at that period being ha coming under a lot of scrutiny. Uh, that's just neither here nor there. I'm just going to put that out oh. there. Yeah. Um, so they found, they've said they found radio, tactical equipment, et cetera. I know some People just are rejecting all of that. I don't know what to make of it. Um, of, of course, we should not instinctively believe what the government is showing us, and evidence can be planted. I mean, I find the, 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 the weight of the evidence, to me, tips toward that they were using this hospital in some capacity. Uh, I don't know to what extent, and it's certainly possible Israel could exaggerate it. Um, it's also, of course, possible that Hamas could be using it as a hospital and is lying about not doing so and tried to cover up that it was very active at the hospital. What else could be said? So one of the things that people had concerns of was this conflicting narrative of, well, if Hamas had time to close up the, the tunnel system that you had hoped to find, then why were the, or these, you know, handful of guns that were kind of sporadically placed around the hospital? One of the caches of guns was allegedly found in a room with an MRI machine um, in a part of the hospital that was ostensibly being used. Uh, MRI machines obviously are expensive and useful and blah, blah, blah. Maybe it hadn't been used because the power was out. I don't know. A lot of things could be true. But it, that obviously raised some eyebrows because famously there can be no metal in a room where an, an MRI um, was used. So that the implication is it was placed there in a more recent 
timeline. Other people were scrutinizing the fact that uh, the IDF, one of the official Israel accounts, um, the at IDF on Twitter, had posted the video of the, uh, of the general doing the tour of the hospital. Um, saying no cuts, no edits, just the undeniable truth. Watch as Jonathan Kornikus exposes the countless Hamas weapons IDF troops have uncovered in the Shifa Hospital MRI building. They then deleted that post and reposted it with a section of the video edited out. Now, internet being the internet, was able to, able to quickly recapture what had um, been deleted. And the section of the video that was deleted was when they were zooming in on a, on a laptop that they alleged in the video was a ha Hamas la laptop, but on the screen of the laptop, a prisoner who was taken hostage on October, that by Hamas on October 7th, is, is shown posting on Facebook on the video. So it seems to con conflict some of the narratives about who and when the hostages were taken, and perhaps that is why it was cut out of the video. But regardless, just the optics of saying, we're gonna post something that's pure truth, uncut, unfiltered, then taking it down to re-edit it and put it back up was, suggesting that there is some sophistry happening on the part, at least, of the, of the IDF account. I think what this controversy shows, really, is that there's going to be no, frankly, dramatic moment where Hamas's top leadership is all killed or captured at one time. Like that, maybe that was the fantasy here, that they're all, this is like the last stand and they're all holed up and you take them out and then this violence can end and you've, you know, you've cut the head off the snake of this terrorist organization. Um, that's just, that's not going to happen. They're diffuse, they're spread out, they're embedded in the population. And, um, and if you're really going to try to totally take them out, it's going to involve a lot more bombing and death at a point where that is clearly becoming unacceptable, at least to spec West spectators in America and elsewhere in the international community. And then it becomes, what are you going to do about that? Are you going to proceed anyway? Um, or are you going to try to reach some other solution? I, I don't know that Israel is willing to do anything else, um, given what happened on October 7th, but it uh, it underscores how difficult the situation is. I, I think that's right. Um, it's kind of remarkable that it's taken so long. I mean, so many of us have been asking this question, you know, how many dead civilians will it take before um, Israel and the United States come to that very conclusion? And in response to that question, so many people have said, well, that's inappropriate to ask. But as we went to from as many uh, Palestinian innocents being killed as Israeli innocents were killed on October 7th, to doubling that number, to tripling that number, and now we're at 10 times that number, with 50 percent of that being children almost, I think that becomes more and more pressing. And when an operation like this, which again, Israel was very clear, they, they justified not just the bombing of this hospital, but all of these hospitals because they said Hamas was not just there, not just that there was a member of Hamas that passed through, but that this hospital specifically was a command center. And that justified disrupting power and uh, gas and food to this is the biggest hospital in Gaza that was treating an enormous number of patients and was a last line of relief for people and also provided shelter for people. You know, was it worth it is a question that is harder and harder, I think, for Israel and the United States as its backer to justify. And you saw, even just last night, um, President Biden made some additional remarks where he repeated, and this is a sensitive issue, but he repeated the line about decapitated babies. And it does start to increasingly feel like, I said on my radar yesterday, there is an emphasis on that kind of a narrative, on the quality of the crimes that Hamas is alleged to have committed, whether or not they've been proven, as the sheer number of deaths obviously militates in favor of seeing Israel's actions as exponentially more cruel just numbers-wise. So then you have to focus on something other than the numbers. Yeah, I think Israel is going to have to start asking itself questions about its intelligence if it, I mean, they, they want to take out Hamas, and, if, and they just spent a lot of it. They sent in troops. They didn't, they didn't just bomb this hospital. They actually launched a ground operation against it, which takes time and resources, and, uh, and obviously was disruptive to the to the very necessary work that the hospital was doing. And apparently Hamas had enough time to, in their version of events, escape through the tunnels and brick them up behind them. Um, does not speak well of the Israeli government's planning of this war, even from a strategic standpoint, yeah. of just eliminating Hamas no matter what it yeah, costs. Well, look, well you think, have to actually yeah. do that then. I think the problem is, like when you read um, Norm Fiegelstein's book on Gaza, 
it was remarkable is how much of it sounds exactly like the present. And it's such to beg the question, is this just Israel's MO to say that there's going to be this base in a hospital that is never substantiated? It wasn't substantiated in previous wars, in previous incursions. They say it. They don't allow humanitarian groups to independently investigate. The humanitarian groups write it up as, well, who knows? Well, and so then we keep just doing this over and over again. At the same but time— But Hamas is somewhere, right? I mean, they, they, they exist. They're hiding uh, somewhere. They have uh, hostages. Course. So the question is, do you want to use the existence of Hamas, which, again, as we've talked about, being Netanyahu pi pipered into leadership, do you want to use the existence of a Hamas to do a bombing campaign that mows the lawn and periodically kills thousands of Palestinian innocents? Or do you want to work toward a longer-term solution that ends the occupation? You know, and I think what they want to do is— what they state that they want to do is eliminate Hamas, but I'm saying right. they're not doing a very good job. But what of we're that. seeing is they they planted an Israeli flag on the top of this hospital, like a conquering army. Is this about eliminating Hamas or is it about expanding Israeli territory? I mean, th these are the Should questions be about people are asking. Hamas, but more rising right after this.